Welcome to our second panel, which focuses in on Southern Florida. First, we have Adam Myers representing the Tampa Bay region. Second, Warren Baucom, Southwest Florida. Next, let's welcome Megan DiGiacomo, South Central Florida region. And finally, Pierre T. Pesciro with uh, South Florida. First, let's hear from Adam Myers, Tampa Bay region. Thank you so much, Casey, and welcome to Tampa Bay, everyone. My name is Adam Myers. I am the Director of Business Development for the Tampa Bay Economic Development Council. And this year I serve as the Regional Director for the Florida Economic Development Council for Tampa Bay. So I'm excited to give you an overview of our Tampa Bay region. What you may not know is the Tampa Bay region is comprised of an eight county region nestled in the west central coast of Florida along the Gulf Coast. Our region has a population of over 5 million people and a regional GDP of over $208 billion that you can see here on the slides. We're made up of eight counties, as I mentioned. Those are Citrus, all the way to the north, followed by Hernando, Pasco, Pinellas, Hillsboro, Polk County, Manatee, and Sarasota counties. And that does include the cities of Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater, Lakeland, Sarasota, Bradenton, and it really covers about four different MSAs. Now in Tampa Bay, we are home to an amazing quality of life where you will have no shortage of things to do should you choose to locate here or for your employees. Whether it's going to see one of our championship sports teams like the NFL Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the back-to-back -back Stanley Cup winners for the NHL, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the American League champion or American League East champions, Tampa Bay Rays, and the Tampa Bay Rowdies. But like the rest of Florida, we have access to gorgeous year-round weather, allowing you to take advantage of our world-ranked beaches, including top-ranked beaches like St. Pete Beach and internationally known beaches like Clearwater Beach. Both beaches, fishing, boating, paddleboarding, you can do all of that during the year, and you may even get a chance to run into some of our manatees along the Gulf. But our Really, we also have bush gardens where you can enjoy afternoon thrills by getting on the latest roller coasters or getting a chance to experience the wildlife. There really is no shortage of things to do and our nightlife and entertaining is just as vibrant. We have everything that you could want from a major urban city to also going out into more rural areas of the region. Now, in our region, we have some very key regional assets that are going to be really key for your business's success. We are home to three international airports, Tampa International Airport, St. Pete Clearwater, and Sarasota Bradenton International will ensure that you have nonstop direct access to over 100 domestic and international routes from the region. And all of our airports are currently growing their international routes as that's a primary focus for our region as we grow. We also have major cargo airports like Lakeland Linder Airport in Polk County, which is home to Amazon's new cargo operations in the region. The region is also home to two deep water ports, Port Tampa Bay and Port Manatee. These are the closest deep water ports to the Panama Canal, making it easier to bring in products from Asia and then distribute throughout the entire United States. Port Tampa Bay is a 5,000 acre deep water port that extends all the way from downtown Tampa into Southern Hillsborough County. And then from there you go even further south and get to Port Manatee, like you can see on the map. CSX is our major rail provider for freight in the region. And they have two very large intermodal facilities, one in Tampa and also one in Winter Haven. So from a transportation infrastructure standpoint, whether it's by air, by cargo, or by truck, which we are well connected with our interstate access through not only I-4, but also I-75, which travels all the way to the Northeast. And you can get all that way from Port Tampa Bay to the North without even hitting a red light. So with all of that infrastructure, we are well connected to be able to distribute your products and services throughout the region. We also have cutting edge university talent that is coming out of major universities that anchor our region. 
The University of South Florida is our biggest university with over 50,000 students over, across three campuses. For the University of South Florida, they also have a research park on campus and are a state university. In addition, we have Florida Polytechnic University in Polk County, which is the state's newest university that is primarily focused on STEM education. Also, we have private universities that are anchored throughout the region, whether it is the University of Tampa or St. Leo, which gives you access to thousands of students, or you can possibly partner with some of our state technical and community colleges throughout the region. For example, in, I believe it is Sarasota Bradenton, you will find partnerships with our state community and technical schools. For example, in 2022, Manatee Technical College will open a technical training program for AMP and airframe composites on field at Sarasota and Bradenton International Airport. Now with these key assets, we are seeing key industry sectors that are thriving in Tampa Bay. We have a major defense and security presence anchored by MacDill Air Force Base, which is home to both Central Command and Special Operations Command. There are nearly 20,000 people on base with a mixture between active duty enlisted military as well as civilian contractors. And that is a major opportunity in the community. Tech is also playing a huge role in our growth. We are not only seeing new companies choosing to expand or relocate here, but many of our partners around the region are focused on building our tech ecosystem of startup companies that are also thriving in Tampa Bay, and we're seeing a lot more activity there as well. Aviation and aerospace continues to play a huge role in our future. One shout out here is to the Brooksville Tampa Bay Regional Airport and Technology Center, which is home to over 150 different businesses on a 2,400 acre facility. Manufacturing is continuing to be a key factor in our growth, especially as you head outside of the urban cores. We're seeing a lot of growth in things like medical devices, aviation, aerospace, parts and components, and also a lot of machine-based robotics manufacturing. On our life sciences and healthcare front, we've seen major investments from biopharma companies like Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Amgen, and Bristol-Myers Squibb. Additionally, Moffitt Cancer Center is planning a new clinical center and research campus in Pasco County that will be focused on growing our cluster of cancer research companies with an opportunity to locate there on their campus doing cutting edge research and development work. Financial and professional services has always been our strong point for Tampa, and we have continued to see ongoing investments from groups like Citigroup, JP Morgan, Raymond James Financial, and even newcomers like Santander Consumer, whose parent company, Banco Santander, is headquartered in Spain. Now, with all of this, we are even seeing new niche clusters forming in our region. Manatee County, for example, is seeing strategic investment in sports performance businesses, which is anchored by IMG Academy, the world's largest and most advanced multi-sport training and educational institution. Now, it doesn't just end there. Getting a glimpse of Tampa Bay moving forward, we are constantly seeing global investments from international companies. Companies that I've mentioned like Santander recently announced a $22 million investment in the region that will bring 875 new jobs in financial services while repurposing a 115,000 square foot former retail big box facility into their new office in Pasco County. CAE is a manufacturer of training and aviation simulation technology. They are building their new 40 million plus corporate headquarters campus on Tampa International Airport property that will also grow by an additional 100 jobs, putting them up to over 600 people in the region. They do a lot of their defense contracting work and are headquartered for their U.S. presence here in Tampa, but this is an investment by a Canadian firm that is going to have a huge impact on the region moving forward. We've even seen really investments going from groups like Aldi with distribution and logistics operations across Central Florida, to even a company Wise, which is a fintech startup out of the UK, formerly known as TransferWise. 
but it's not just big businesses that we're seeing. We're seeing anything that startups and also international businesses coming to our region that may start out with one to two employees, but are working with us throughout the region to really get a soft landing and set up shop in Tampa Bay. So that is something that we are all here to support, knowing that you're going to start somewhere and that you have the resources and the ability to be successful here in the region. So with that, I invite you to come see us. All of our regional partners from Citrus, Hernando, Pasco, Polk, Pinellas, Hillsboro, Sarasota, and Manatee counties have virtual booths here set up. So I hope you will take a second to join each one of those virtual booths and learn more about their individual communities and find where your future success lies. We're here to help answer any questions and hope you consider Tampa Bay for your next expansion and relocation opportunity. So with that, I will turn it back over to you, Casey. Thank you, Adam. Now let's turn to Warren Bauckham with Southwest Florida. Thank you, Casey. Uh, I'm Warren Bauckham with the Lee County Economic Development Office. I serve as the Southwest Florida Regional Director. Um, appreciate you having me here. Um, I want to share a little bit about uh, Southwest Florida for those that aren't familiar with it. Um, we are uh, located down here on the east side of the state, about two hours south of Tampa and an hour and a half to two hours uh, west of Miami and the other coast. We are made up of Lee County, Charlotte County, and Collier County here in the area. Uh, between the three county region, we are a combined population, about 1.4 million residents. We are growing extremely rapidly. Since 2010, we've had a 21.5% increase to our population. Also wanted to share, since we're talking about uh, foreign investment area, We've got over 33,000 European born residents here in Southwest Florida, owning businesses small and large. Uh, we are continuing to expect uh, rapid population growth. We're constantly ranked among the fastest growing uh, communities in the United States, not just Florida. And it is a, it's ripe with opportunities. A little couple of quick demographic notes. The, the median household income here in Southwest Florida is just under $58,000 for a house. And that includes ranges uh, from Charlotte County where we have corporate executives investing in extremely high-end properties to uh, very affordable workforce housing in our communities across the region, including uh, Lehigh Acres, Cape Coral, Punta Gorda, Port Charlotte, those areas. And um, we also have a lot of agricultural industrial lands. Uh, we kind of are on the cusp of some of the rural communities. So we've got a very diverse population and culture here. Um, as far as the uh, medium home value, it's at $253,000 for a home here. As far as the um, educational institutions here in Southwest Florida, these are some of our strongest um, areas of opportunity to connect with young growing institutions, to be able to create programs to, to train employees, to invest in uh, new research and development opportunities, including Florida Gulf Coast University, which has over 15,000 students now. They have um, over 60 undergraduate programs, multiple master's programs, and are beginning to offer seven different doctoral programs with um, that opportunity growing more and more as the university grows. It's one of the youngest universities in the state system and has uh, innovative approaches to business entrepreneurship, engineering, and agricultural programs. They've also opened up one of the, the first water school in the state to study ecological issues related to the water crisis and, and the climate changes that are impacting that. In addition, we have Florida Southwestern State College, which is a um, three campus university with satellite operations within some of our other organizations. They are strong on certifications, uh, rapid learning and credentialing, and they offer over 60 programs of study uh, across uh, a wide variety of topics that are useful to 
our manufacturers, our technology companies, and our small businesses. Hodges University is a private university that's located in Lee and Collier County. It serves non-traditional students, uh, allowing our workers to continue their education as they move through their careers. They offer 17 different undergraduate departments, as well as five master's programs, and are looking at several workforce credentialing programs, as well as being a Hispanically certified university uh, recognized through uh, several chambers of commerce and um, leading institutions uh, across the country. Um, here in Southwest Florida, a lot of our international representation comes from Europe. Um, like the rest of Florida, we do have a large Hispanic population, uh, although we are not tied as closely to some of the South and Central American and Caribbean markets as Tampa, Miami, and Orlando are. We do have strong connections into Germany, the United Kingdom, Italy, and now Israel through the university. Uh, as you can see here, uh, our German companies uh, include Klaka of America, which is an independent company uh, in manufacturing and uh, packaging of pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. We have strong ties into uh, the German community through Arthrex, while not a German company, their leadership has strong ties to Germany. The United Kingdom has expanded into Southwest Florida uh, with the location of Chipex, which manufactures and distributes automotive touch-up paint and works with Tesla, Porsche, and most of the other uh, automotive brands. Uh, in, from Italy, Clever Tech North America has located as a subsidiary of an Italian company serving uh, the packaging industry for sales, support, technology, and everything throughout Mexico and Canada, as well as the U.S. They design, manufacture, test, and install, as well as offer support after the sale. And the Florida Gulf Coast University has entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Tel Aviv University to focus on entrepreneurial activities to support our robust um, entrepreneurial program under the Kawanui School of Entrepreneurship at Florida Gulf Coast University. It offers a very um, exciting program that partners with the other disciplines at the university to add an entrepreneurial focus to an engineering degree or a traditional business degree uh, or any of the other uh, undergraduate programs they offer there. For transportation, our primary uh, mode of transportation, uh, aside from our road systems connected to Interstate 75 is air. We do not have any deep water ports of any kind in Southwest Florida, although we are just a two hour drive away from the ports on the East Coast and up into Port Manatee, north of here. Uh, our primary transportation hub is Southwest Florida International Airport, which as you can see from the statistics in the PowerPoint, uh, does quite a bit of total freight. They just passed 10 million passengers in 2019. And while they had a small dip as COVID impacted our community, they were one of the fastest recovering airports in the country and have returned to record breaking numbers of passenger traffic. And so they are still a very robust airport. They offer nonstop service to Frankfurt, Germany, uh, several locations in Canada, as well as to the West Coast of the United States for connections into China and the Asian markets. Uh, Punta Gorda Airport in uh, uh, Charlotte County uh, provides an additional connection into the eastern United States through Allegiant Airlines and um, connections to various markets there that we can serve for tourism related businesses as well as for um, last minute travel. Uh, RSW Airport, uh, um, Southwest Florida International Airport, uh, there is a foreign trade zone, number 213. It is hosted and managed by the Lee County Port Authority. Uh, while most of the uh, foreign trade zone is on airport property, uh, they do have programs where you can apply to have the foreign trade zone designation applied to your project. Um, you would have to contact our office or the Port Authority to uh, review how to go about that if you've decided to explore that opportunity. The airport is, um, 
directly connected to Interstate 75 uh, to enable uh, great logistics and distribution opportunities. They have created a large Skyplex complex that is um, focused on both non-aviation and aviation related uses. As you can see from the presentation, they have over 870 acres designated for office, medical, uh, science, technology, research and development, as well as retail. Um, it is a um, well connected to workforce housing and other areas. We have 280 acres uh, directly connected to the flight line with prime ramp access, uh, reusing the airport property that was once the airport terminal when a new terminal was built on the opposite side of the, um, of the runways. This space was designated for use to accommodate uh, repair, maintenance, overhaul, other aviation support services, and those types of programs. Uh, here in Southwest Florida, our targeted industries do include corporate headquarters, clean tech, manufacturing, life sciences, technology, and transportation and logistics. Corporate headquarters has been a robust industry. We've had the relocation of uh, Hertz's global headquarters several years ago and has been a strong uh, uh, feeder system into other corporate development with the spinoff of HERC, Hertz Heavy Equipment Rental Programs. Um, they've split off as a separate publicly traded company with a new corporate infrastructure. We also have um, Alico companies headquartered here in Southwest Florida, as well as Arthrex manufacturing for the medical industry. And we are continuing to attract fashion industry uh, headquarters with Chico's FAS, uh, Matilda Jane Clothing, and uh, also Donna Joe Brands, a Brazilian company, is looking at Southwest Florida for their corporate headquarters as well as well. Many of the clean tech companies find Southwest Florida attractive due to the balance of environmental concerns. Um, Southwest Florida has uh, preserved uh, a large portion of our, our lands to help with the uh, water process, the, the replenishment of the watershed, uh, the maintaining the Everglades flow and those types of things. So clean tech, including the solar industry with various uh, support services, have several companies here. As far as manufacturing is concerned, uh, we have a strong, robust manufacturing partnership uh, representing Lee Collier and Charlotte counties, um, working closely with Florida Makes. And we have uh, primarily medical manufacturing, but also small-scale manufacturing all the way up to some of our larger, as I mentioned, Arthrex type of companies. Um, the life sciences, include Alginol um, and several other uh, biotech companies that support the cosmetics industry and life sciences and, and some of those other facilities. Information technology is strong and robust with um, several cybersecurity companies, including um, Cygent and uh, Inceptus as major leaders in the cybersecurity industry. We have uh, financial services, uh, fintech companies in headquartered in Collier County and smaller managed services providers in all three counties as well. Transportation and logistics is very strong as we look to uh, move some of the agricultural products out of Southwest Florida and, and South Central Florida um, with a corporate headquarters for Scotland, USA's division, which provides trucking and logistics support for the agricultural industry as well. Um, many of the um, food processing, small-scale food processing companies also uh, use their, um, their services as well. Uh, that's about all I have for today. I welcome any questions that Casey may have. Uh, look forward to um, continuing to work with you. And I'm going to not share my screen now so that folks can see what else is going on. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to the rest of the conversation. Thank you, Warren. Now let's hear from Megan DiGiacomo with South Central Florida. Thank you, Casey. My name is Megan DiGiacomo, and thank you everyone for joining us today to learn more about our communities and how to do business in the great state of Florida. I am here today to represent the Firo region. 
the Florida Heartland Economic Region of Opportunity, which is a six county rural area of opportunity in South Central Florida, right in the middle of the state. Our region is made up of six counties spanning 5,500 square miles and with a population of more than 260,000. These include DeSoto, Glades, Hardy, Hendry, Highlands, and Okeechobee counties, each with their own dedicated economic development teams. And we're ready to assist any business considering our region. Now, some may think we're in the middle of nowhere, but we're actually in the center of everything. Our central location provides fast access to all parts of Florida. Within a two hour radius of our region, you'll find 86% of the state's population. That's more than 18 million people. Throughout our region, you'll find class one and short line railways, four surrounding interstate highways, quick access to seven deep water seaports, nine airports, eight of which are international, and two foreign trade zones, which is perfect for international businesses needing to import and export materials and products. Being centrally located in the middle of the state provides a region with overall costs at, at least 12% lower than surrounding metro areas, meaning your money goes farther here, especially with no impact fees, which makes development and project renovations much less expensive. Businesses and employees have access to multiple surrounding metro areas within just two hours, meaning business logistics in and out of the region can be accomplished in a single day trip and residents or employees can enjoy metro amenities for a day's trip and then come back within the same day to a much less congested and less expensive home area. Bureau is home to three state colleges with five campuses that serve over 8,000 students annually. Our central location also provides access to a robust talent pipeline through Florida's extensive higher education network, which currently ranks number one in the country. These colleges have invested in strategic programs such as advanced manufacturing and mobile welding labs. Our, our colleges also work closely with existing or incoming businesses by learning about their specific needs and can help provide coursework and education opportunities that fit a business's specific talent requirements. Surrounded colleges and universities serve more than 200,000 students annually. And within that same two hour radius, a prospect's labor pool can be up to 1.5 million. Historically, the region has a stronghold in agriculture, which means our labor force is skilled in production with strong, honest work ethic. The region is located on the Florida Ridge, also meaning that it is the highest and driest part of the state. For our targeted industries of manufacturing, logistics and distribution, agribusiness and aviation, our six counties put businesses at the center of everything needed to succeed. Our large region is built up by our four, by our six smaller communities which means less bureaucracy, a business-friendly and hands-on environment, and expeditious turnaround for businesses' needs. We are here to be your one-stop shop and concierge as a business considers our region. The Firo region has an abundance of affordable and developable land for ground-up build-to-suit facilities, as well as a number of dedicated industrial parks throughout our six counties. The Firo region is already home to a number of international businesses from all over the world, including Italy, France, Australia, Poland, and even Sweden. We find that international businesses look to invest in our area as a way to make their first introduction to Florida. Lower costs of business and entry while still having central access to other communities and resources make our area attractive and of interest. We have several businesses that have started off with U.S. sales office hubs that have later expanded into their manufacturing processes. We also see businesses with international reach in our surrounding metros looking at our region for an opportunity to access larger areas for expansion, as some of our surrounding communities are much more expensive and congested than ours, and it can be difficult and pricey to find additional developable areas in their current market. So as the Regional Director for the Heartland Economic Region of Opportunity, and on behalf of our region as a whole, I want to thank you for joining us virtually today. As you visit the various booths over the next few days, I'd love to invite you to stop by our Firo booth. There you will find representatives from each of our six counties that are very excited to meet with you. Thank you, Megan. Next, let's hear from Pierre Tachereau with South Florida Region. 
Thank you, Casey, and we appreciate this opportunity. My name is Pierre Tashro. I'm the Director of Business Development with the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance located in South Florida. Um, when uh, you hear of Southeast Florida, for most people around the world, the first thought is vacationing, uh, not doing business. And it makes sense. Um, in 2019, pre-COVID, 129 million tourists visited the state of Florida, of which 40 million, 32% came to South Florida. So tourism is clearly an economic driver here. And, and we like to say it all starts with a visit. Uh, for myself, back in 1986, I came to Florida for a two-week vacation. And when I returned to Montreal, uh, where I lived at the time, I prepared myself to relocate to South Florida. I have been living here since 1987. So for me too, it started with a visit. More than 200 people do the same every single day and move to South Florida. I moved for two reasons. Number one, the sheer beauty of South Florida and in Southeast Florida for that matter, with its beautiful vegetation coastline, the beaches, the fresh air, uh, I really fell in love with this region. And the second reason that probably uh, as important is because I felt a sense of opportunity. I felt to my core that I would do well and have business success here. Uh, so, so I did something that many younger generations uh, do today. You know, they move to a place that provides them with quality of life, quality of place, and, and then they look for work. The big reason why so many people move to, to Florida and South Florida every day is because it's a low tax environment. There is no state income tax, thus people keep more of their earned money and, and then they reinvest in the community. One of our community leaders, the, the late uh, Wayne Heisinga, the only man who ever owned three Fortune 500 companies uh, on the New York Stock Exchange, he used to say, uh, this about, about income. It's not what you make, it's what you keep. And people relocating here tell me all the time how being overtaxed where they live was a determining factor in moving their business and their families to this region. So South Florida is also the only tropical metropolis in the United States with a demographics that represents countries from around the world. Uh, it's a mega region that has 104 municipalities, a population of over 6.3 million residents, and a GDP of $330 billion. Now, if South Florida was a country, it would be the 42nd largest economy in the world, larger than countries such as South Africa, Colombia, Portugal, Peru, Greece, which all have a much larger population. So the primary reason for its strong commerce is certainly its infrastructure and connectivity to support the growth of any modern business. In South Florida, we know how to move people, we know how to move goods. Uh, there's three international airports that offer direct service to over 300 global destinations that include direct flights to Tel Aviv, Dubai, Sao Paulo, Moscow, and all major destinations in Europe and across the Americas. Uh, Miami International Airport also holds number one position for international passengers, number one for international freight, freight sorry, and the only certified pharmaceutical uh, transshipment hub in the United States. Our three deep water seaports are the closest US ports to the Panama Canal and served as the cruise capital of the world they are connected to rail, enabling to move your cargo from ship to rail and reach all of the United States within five days. From a real estate perspective, we offer everything from class A building with oceanfront views and thriving urban centers to creative neighborhoods with flex space next to breweries and coffee shops to state of the art industrial parks. South Florida is internationally connected with one of the largest foreign-born population of any region. We're not just multinational, but multilingual, multicultural, 
We have one of the largest concentration of foreign consulates outside of New York City and a thriving international trade and finance industries. The Brightline rapid train system is connecting the urban centers of Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach. Extensions to Orlando and Tampa uh, are under development right now uh, with plans to open very soon. Uh, in less than one hour, you can go direct from downtown Miami to downtown Fort Lauderdale to downtown Palm Beach and, and very soon directly from your cruise ship to uh, Disney World. So South Florida has learned from also from historic windstorms uh, to build one of the most ardent and resilient built environments in the world. All modern structures are hurricane windstorm rated with redundant systems. For more than 12 years, our region has partnered on the Southeast Florida Regional Climate Change Compact, with, which creates and implements solutions to increase regional resil resiliency uh, to climate change. As a result, we are investing billions of dollars in upgrading seawalls, water, sewer systems, and raising vulnerable sites. So with more than 300,000 college students at more than 35 colleges and universities throughout the region, South Florida is also home to some of the largest alumni populations from numerous powerhouse state universities and, and private universities. South Florida has a strong pipeline of talent uh, that world-class companies headquartered here can pull from. And we welcome companies from every industry and people from all countries, yet we have clusters of related industries. Uh, aviation aerospace is one of them. As early as 1934, if you remember the Pan Am Airlines, National Airlines started their operations in Miami, followed by Eastern Airlines. People from around the world would come and vacation in, in Florida, in South Florida. Now, later, when these companies went out of business, their crew members, mechanics, engineers, C-suite executives were reluctant to leave the region. And, and many of them started their own aviation, flight schools, maintenance repair and overall businesses, et cetera. And today, the South Florida Aviation Hub has one of the largest MRO clusters in the world. In addition to several airlines, such as Spirit Airlines, Silver Airlines, North Atlantic Airways, Amerijet International, who are all headquartered here and provide for a large pool of industry workforce. To obtain a list of the aviation aerospace companies doing business in South Florida, visit www.sflaviationhub.com. Information technology is another local thriving industry. Most people in industrial countries around the world use a cell phone, yet few know where the technology was developed. Um, the first cell phone was invented right here in 1973 by Motorola. The first personal computer was also developed here by IBM in 1981. Some of the leading technology companies such as Microsoft South America, Magic Leap, Citrix, First Data, UKG, American Express are all headquartered here. For more information on the South Florida technology ecosystem, please visit the Tech Gateway website at www.techgateway.org. Now, South Florida is a longtime home for many biomedical companies as well. To the north are Scripps, Florida, Max Planck, Florida Institute, and Torrey Pines Institute for Molecular Studies. Uh, with a growing workforce and vibrant universities and research facilities, South Florida offers an ideal ecosystem for life science companies. Uh, for decades, the area has been home to one of the most dynamic biomedical sectors in the country. And today, Allergan, Stryker, and Teva are among the major medical device, biomedical, pharmaceutical, and clinical research companies with R&D, manufacturing, and distribution facilities in the area. To the south of the region, the uh, University of Miami Miller School of Medicine and Florida International University's Biomedical Engineering Department are investing in biomedical research, commercialization programs. Uh, life science companies also benefit from a trained 13,000 person workforce. 
and a value chain that includes suppliers, manufacturers, distributors, and science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM workforce training programs. So as far as other industries, the financial, financial services industry is, is very well represented. Uh, South Florida is a location of choice for them. Whether you're an investment firm looking for high growth opportunities or an entrepreneur seeking a business friendly, uh, low tax environment, uh, South Florida provides an incredible quality of life as well as all the tools you need to succeed. Uh, the financial services environment here is well balanced between private equity investors, angel investors, international banks, hedge funds, and everything in between. Um, I'd be remiss not to mention our legacy industry, the marine industry, it's an, which is a national uh, annual regional uh, economic output of about $12.5 billion. Um, every year, South Florida has three international boat shows, including the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, the largest in-water boat show in the world. Um, the show takes place on the first week of November, and this year, coming out of COVID, it was a huge success. The economic impact of the 2021 boat show was $1.4 billion. We accommodated over 100,000 visitors, of which 49% came from other states or other countries. The total sales for the four days uh, were $715 million. Uh, South Florida is dedicated to promoting, protecting, and growing the 149,000 regional middle-class jobs here in our marine businesses and promoting also, you know, of course, boating lifestyles for families cruising and fishing to yachts and, and the goods and services that sustain them. Because of the available workforce, deep seaports, international airports, rail and highway systems, we're positioned to support the global logistics sector. Uh, from transportation to warehousing with multiple foreign trade zones, South Florida has the capacity to move goods and people in very convenient ways. Our proximity to Mexico, the Caribbean Basin, Central and South America is a tremendous asset for international commerce. Um, so whether you're looking for the best and brightest employees, a location with easy access to major international markets, world-class educational opportunities for your employees, business-friendly government, or an outstanding lifestyle second to none, South Florida should be at the top of your list for your next relocation or expansion project. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. And thank you to all the panelists. Great job. Let's move on to Q&A. Great. Well, we are back uh, together, and um, I am so thrilled and pleased to help showcase South and Central Florida to uh, Earth, and uh, and welcome all of you uh, uh, joining in from uh, from all around uh, the world. Uh, we've got a very august panel uh, in uh, in front of us, and with a world of experience uh, behind us. You've heard a little bit about uh, their individual regions in the uh, in the overviews. Now is our chance. Uh, to hear directly from them with Q&A. So please do uh, review and uh, check out the chat feature uh, on your screens. Keep those questions coming. And uh, But I'm going to start out because each of these um, regions have experience uh, with uh, foreign direct investment. And, and, and Megan, I, I absolutely love your line. Uh, we're not in the middle of nowhere. We're in the middle of everything. Uh, fantastic. Um, and just because a region uh, might not be in a major metro doesn't mean it might, uh, it's not a great fit for an international company. So uh, Megan, uh, um, uh, tell us a little bit about your favorite inter uh, international FDI project. Thank you, Casey. I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this one. Like Casey said, you know, a lot of people might not think that we're landing large international projects in our region, but we have quite a few and it might surprise people. One of my favorites is a company called Eastone. They're Italian based. And back in 2006, they decided to open a U.S. facility for manufacturing their products. Um, they did so because they were looking at trying to have their products in the United States 
um, because they do um, export them across the nation so widely and what they create are large slabs of stone products um, such as countertops. And so their uh, facility um, here in the region is actually their worldwide source of their engineered stone. And at the facility here in the region, they produce over 8 million square feet annually of their stone products. And um, one of their largest projects that they just did recently throughout the nation um, that they were able to do right in the center of Florida was they created the stone uh, tabletops for all of the Victoria's Secrets across the country. And so them being able to manufacture those here in the center of the state of Florida and branch them out through the rest of the country really gave them an advantage. So again, they're Italian based. They were looking for a place in Florida to start smack dab in the middle to get their products and services out. They landed at our Sebring Regional Airport and Industrial Park. That's a 2000 acre um, industrial park that still has land for development and it has full infrastructure. So they wanted a location where they were ready to go and turnkey and had multiple sources of ways to get their products in and out of our area. So their facility that's around 100,000 square feet currently, which is what they initially started with, is directly on a rail spur. And they can also take products out via truck once it's completed. We're surrounded by seaports, so they can go that way as well. Um, and then the airport does have a cargo component. So it is multimodal in a way that they can get products in and out. The airport is also a foreign trade zone, which we find is very important to international companies looking at our region when they're bringing products in and out. And the great part about that foreign trade zone is that it doesn't just cover that Sebring Regional Airport, it covers all six counties in our region. So anywhere you tend to land in, in this region, you will have access to that foreign trade zone benefit. So those were a lot of the factors that they were looking at, and they've been quite successful. They have about 100 employees um, right now, and they continue to grow. Um, they really wanted that central location, and they had that turnkey building solution. That airport is very business friendly, very hands-on with their tenants, and they're also a community redevelopment agency, which means they have certain incentives that can go to appropriate projects. In addition to what they are currently doing and what they've been doing since 2006, during the pandemic, a lot of businesses were having to reconfigure um, how they were doing things both internationally and in the United States. A lot of the international companies were having a hard time with getting their raw materials into the United States to continue their production. And this company was one that was experiencing that as well. So over uh, the last couple of years and moving into now, we are working with them to expand their facility by another 100,000 square feet. Um, to make sure that they can manage their own destiny with those raw materials here in the States and get those products out quicker. So that's one that's been here for two, you know, since 2006 and continues to grow and is overcoming some of the issues that they dealt with with the pandemic and they're being able to thrive here in Florida. That's one of my favorites. Fantastic, uh, Megan. Great, great example. And uh, I was uh, I was raised in in rural Florida. I've lived in South Florida, lived in in Central Florida, and done business all over. It's it's so uh, great to hear uh, th about the success um, there in your region too. Um, let's go to uh, Adam uh, in Tampa. Uh, tell tell us about uh, one of your favorite projects. You know, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but the CAE USA project. Yeah. Obviously, CAE is a very large. Canadian owned healthcare aviation simulation firm. And they have a long history in Tampa Bay. They've actually been here for over 40 years with their US headquarters. That's really focused on their defense-based aviation related simulation business. We had the opportunity to work with them as really having a 40 year old building they needed to modernize in the community. So think about having that facility, they had to look at options to really, where are they gonna plant roots even further and build a brand new campus that would house their headquarters operation, manufacturing and training. So we partnered with a lot of people to make that project happen. It was well over a $50 million investment that I had mentioned, but what they're gonna be building here, we had to partner with not only our Tampa International Airport, because we found a lot of synergies with locating directly on airport property because they bring in so many people from a training <coughs> standpoint and also do so much business travel from a headquarters standpoint, having that access to be right on the airport and right near the gate was really critical for them. But also with a project of this size and knowing that they were going after a lot of different defense contracts, they also had to look at their ROI models. 
So we actually turned to the state and an entity in the state called Space Florida that has unique financing opportunities for aviation aerospace related businesses to partner with them to help really structure the financing on the deal in order to meet their ROI models with that. Now they have over 500 employees locally and throughout the region already, but they're planning to grow by another 100 employees. And even since we've announced that project, they've already hit that mark. And really they're gonna be planning this facility to grow even further from there. So with all of those factors taken into consideration, we also knew that while we were working with some of the local operations people, very quickly the folks from Canada got involved as well in looking at the overall framework for the project. So one of the things that really helped us was just the constant communication and partnership throughout all the different players. We had folks from Enterprise Florida, when we go to aviation trade shows, making sure that we were meeting with the parent company to make sure that the project was still on track and that we were meeting their timelines and everything that was about their goals for the project. And then they would pass and communicate that information down to us to make sure we were then communicating with the local operations. So one of the things that was really exciting about this is not only was it a foreign direct investment win for us, but it was also a huge retention project. So that just shows you like all of our counterparts throughout the state, we're not just gonna recruit you here, we're gonna make sure that we can keep you here and grow you here as well. Adam, great, great thoughts all around, and congrats on that uh, that fantastic uh, deal. Uh, Warren, you you mentioned multiple uh, international firms that have chosen Southwest Florida uh, to grow. Uh, what's your favorite? Um, yeah, honestly, I, I that puts me on the spot because I, I I do like like them all, and and um, it, it's tough because they're they're so unique. It's hard to pick a favorite. I, I was I was thinking about one of ours. It's ProMed Instruments. It's it's a division of a it's, it's a german it's the u.s based operations of a german company uh one of the things i like about them is it shows a life cycle of, of growth of foreign investment here in the community um we have a very strong german population here especially the city of cape coral uh, but throughout southwest florida down into naples um it's strongly tied to the tourism industry we work very closely with uh, our partners in spurs tourism and sports development uh, as we have international sporting events that come into the area to connect with um, business owners and executives and, and folks that, that have business. Well, PMI located in, um, in Cape Coral, um, well, I believe it's over 20 years ago now, and it was tied to some of their folks wanted to live in Cape Coral because they'd visited their story of Florida right there a little bit. And as they grew, uh, some of the things that we identified to help them with was a lot of their training components. They, they both brought people in both internationally, but also from as they serve the domestic market here in the United States, uh, Cape Coral and, and Southwest Florida is a wonderful destination for training the doctors that use their equipment, as well as other clients and, and distributors and, and folks they work with. And so we help facilitate um, various meetings and events for them to help them grow um, as, as they expanded and, and increased their patents and, and various uh, uh, things in the manufacturing sector. Um, connecting them with the Regional Manufacturers Association and Florida makes to, to help with those processes has been invaluable. Um, and they, they've gotten to be a really good community partner, both for the city and the county and the region as a whole. Um, as I said, we're a community of, of small businesses, as most people are, but, you know, particularly in Southwest Florida with our rapid growth, um, you know, 15 years ago, we had half the population we have now. And so some of these foreign companies grew with a county and, and, and we're seeing that uh, between Clock of America, which does packaging for the pharmaceutical and, and cosmetics industry, to um, uh, Scotland, which is a logistic company that's a, a U.S. company, but they are the U.S. division of a Canadian company and the, the owner and the, the president of the, the company here in Southwest Florida uh, began when it was a Canadian company. And so it's been almost indirect foreign investment to a certain extent, but it, it, it provided resources. So we, we love to pull on those strings and, and, and create those connections and leverage them the best we can. Um, we would like to give personal service and, and customize the programs we do with folks. And it's, it's been a wonderful experience working with these uh, companies, having the strong German and, and Latin American population, as well as uh, folks from the UK and Canada, uh, helps solve some of the cultural um, 
issues you may or may not have as, as these companies located in the community. And um, I'll ramble all day about them. They're such neat companies. So I'll stop and let other folks talk a little bit here. So. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Warren. And, and another one, uh, person who might have a hard time uh, finding just one project to, uh, to chat about, Pierre, uh, in, uh, in Southeast Florida. Uh, what, what's one of your favorites? Oh, uh, well, uh, you know, to, to, to all the listeners from around the world that are with us this morning, uh, today, uh, one thing that I want to say is that the project is never too big or too small. And, uh, you know, so if you are, you're out there and you think that you have a two or five person company and that you're too small to come here, I say, come down and visit and see what we have to offer and then start working on your plan. It's never too early to start that process. So, and we've had a lot of, I had the pleasure to work with very small companies and sometimes it was my favorite experience. So one of them was uh, Polanyi. Polanyi uh, manufactures this product. I don't know if you can see it actually, but it's a, uh, this product is lemon juice and lime juice and they are headquartered in Milan, Italy. And um, just a really neat company. Of course, in Western Europe, they do manufacture other goods, but their plan was for them to come to the United States and start shipping throughout the United States, these two juices in the grocery store, which you probably uh, have seen it uh, before or bought it for yourself. Anyway, um, you know, so that process was really, for me, um, really about building a team around them. Because when you come from another country, uh, and, and I'm one person that came from another country, right? Um, well, you have to establish trust and, and, and that's really critical. And I think in Florida, throughout the state, we do a really great job at doing this, making people feel comfortable, making them aware that they will have success here. And so, you know, bridging that cultural gap from where they come and understanding where they're coming from, I think is the first step and, and, and we do a good job as that. And it's funny because last week I had a company from Estonia that came in and I was telling them, look, there are no costs, no fees, you know, for my services. And, and when we look for a property, it will be no fees for that service as well. And they asked me, so, okay, what's the catch? And, you know, it made me laugh because uh, it is so good, it's hard to believe sometimes. But anyway, Polanyi uh, came here and their plan was to build uh, this facility and, and, and attached to, to this plan were uh, certain uh, items that were really critical. First of all, the quality of the water, right? because when you put this to market, uh, the, the, the water has to be very specific in terms of its minerals and, and very low in arsenic, for instance, and things of that nature. Uh, but before that, we needed to establish not only that we had the water capacity and the, 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 the pristine water, but also establishing some banking relationships and, and relationships with, uh, you know, not only that, but they have to show their financials, of course, and, and Keep in mind that some companies sometimes come and they have a whole board of directors wherever they come from, right? In their case, Poling, he had a full board of directors in Europe. So they came coming back and going back to Italy, coming back, going back there. And it's important for us to keep in mind that they're really serious about the business, but there is a lot of uh, T's to cross uh, when you, you, you're moving your business, actually expanding to another country like they did. Um, I think that it takes a lot of guts to do it. Uh, so, you know, between consolidated, consolidated financials and, and establishing those relationships and then, you know, searching for properties um, is another thing. Uh, you know, the, the whole team that we put together, you know, is pulling for the company. And that's another thing that's very important for the company to understand. And then access to, of course, moving their goods, you know, from Port Everglades, uh, um, you know, uh, they were moving uh, lime juice from Argentina to Port Everglades and Lemon juice uh, was coming from, um, uh, where was it coming from? From Italy anyway, uh, uh, Sardang, I think. So uh, moving those goods to Port Everglades and, and then having the infrastructure in place, you know, to move that to the plant, which was in, is in Deerfield Beach. At the, at the time they took 24,000 square feet. They move all the equipment from Italy. So, uh, you know, adapting the equipment to uh, American electric power and, and, and then establishing those lines of productions. Now they've doubled in size. Since then, they also bought a, a fruit um, manufacturing plant in California. 
for supply. Um, and so, and then also the other piece was to make sure that they knew we have the workforce for you uh, from the get go. That's not going to be an issue. Um, and so, so I think it's all of this package that, that we offer um, that from the get go, we let them know, look, you will find success here. And I'm, I'm going to be around. I'm going to stick around. You know, this is not a, a, a one time relationship where once you're established, um, you know, I will be gone. Now we have a very powerful, strong and robust uh, business retention uh, program here where we, uh, we stay in touch and we visit every year. And to make sure that everything on the permitting side, anything that, that could be a challenge to them, we can resolve really quickly so that they can do what they do best is do business. And so Pauling, he uh, was you know, special to me because I still meet with them. When they visit, we go out to dinner uh, and, and we talk and we maintain that relationship. And, um, and I know that they go back and they tell everyone in Italy, right? That this is the greatest place to do business. So that's my story. Excellent, Pierre. I love that. And you, you mentioned a couple of nuggets in there uh, that I just got to say. Our, uh, our economic development community completely recognizes and understands the importance that these decisions make on your company and your career. Sometimes this is the most important decision a person can make in his or her career, the opportunity to go to the United States uh, and to attack the U.S. market. How do you do it? Do you have a partner? Do you have a friend uh, in the community in Florida? And the answer is yes, absolutely yes. Um, I want to turn back to Adam. Something you mentioned um, in your presentation, talking about smaller uh, firms um, or even large firms that want to uh, operate a very small footprint to put the toe in the water and try it out. Um, Adam, what, what resources uh, are, are you aware of that uh, can help a company like that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think Pierre kind of touched on that too. You know, no matter the size of the company, actually a lot of our foreign direct investment projects do start out with a small operation. They're not going to initially come here and start manufacturing right away. They're going to import into the United States and then set up maybe a sales operation or some type of operation will footprint here to start spreading their products around while they figure out what their long-term strategies are going to be. So throughout our region, we tend to have a lot of soft landing type programs where not only can we put them in touch with local vendors and suppliers to help them really start up here in the U.S., you know, from accountants and lawyers to banking relationships, start establishing those business connections, but also even with looking at their real estate needs. You know, I don't necessarily need a five, 10-year lease on a 10,000 square foot space that I'm not sure how I'm going to grow into. So we have a lot of different co-working as well as incubator accelerator programs. We even have some within the region that are focused on growing really foreign tech investment, bringing those into the United States. We have one in the region called the Florida Israeli Business Accelerator, which helps take Israeli-based tech companies and really bring them here to the U.S. to really start up operations and start up a U.S. presence. So we have a lot of those niche opportunities throughout the entire Tampa Bay region. And that's one of the reasons why I can't say enough. I hope everyone is visiting all the different booths throughout the regions because you're going to get so many different services and opportunities through those connections and talking with the various economic development agencies. Yes, absolutely, Adam. And uh, as a reminder, please do make sure to uh, keep those uh, questions in the chat uh, coming. Um, uh, Warren, one, one question I had, every time I look at the, the, the growth statistics, uh, that Southwest Florida keeps coming out uh, on top. How, how has that uh, affected foreign investment into your community? Um, well, I, I think it's been a, a great catalyst for the foreign investment because a lot of those growth numbers come from new international residents, the folks that, that locate here, and increasingly because of, they're coming with a company that, that's related to the area or um, they're they're connected in some way to that. Um, you know, as, as Pierre has mentioned, and, and you were just referring to, you know, we're a community of relationships. And, and you know, one of the strengths that we have, especially with the, the German-American um, community, is um, several professional services that are owned and operated. As we talk about small businesses, we, we sometimes forget about the, the folks that are licensed in Germany and in, in America to provide legal services and, and financial services. And we have a robust uh, uh, 
bench of, of, of professionals that, that serve these and, and those relationships that build them and, and can communicate both ways and are in knowledgeable in how to navigate that system between the two companies, between Europe and America, wherever folks are coming from. Um, and I'm probably getting a little off of your question here a little bit, but the, the growth of that, you know, means that you're getting professionals moving from those communities and, and building out the services we can offer, partner with a lot more, um, that type of thing. It's, um, it's allowed us a lot of the foreign investment in Southwest Florida, as throughout Florida, I'm sure, is in the hospitality industry and in residential real estate and, in, and other things like that. So we, we try to make sure that we keep our finger on the pulse of that so that we can make those connections and, and strengthen them within the broader business community, not just for folks that may come here for a vacation or, or, or buy a home here as they want to have a place in the United States versus wherever they come from. And... Um, it, it does prevent some, present some challenges as well because, you know, sometimes you don't even realize somebody's here and all of a sudden, you know, somebody goes, well, have you heard about so-and-so? Well, yeah, but I thought it was something else last week, you know, <laughs> or something like that and, and, and that type of thing. But um, it, it, it is, to me, it's for us uh, a strength in that, that it's opportunity. The growth is opportunity and folks see that and it gets attention. Um, as we make those lists around the you know, the business publications, uh, people see that and they they call us and I don't know, hey, what's going on? How can we be part of that growth? And we try to help them. Absolutely, Warren. That 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 rising tide certainly does raise um, all boats. Um, uh, Pierre, you mentioned in your uh, in your in your discussion a lot of really interesting points, but one stuck out at me. I wouldn't necessarily think South Florida, Southeast Florida, would be a great uh, place for manufacturing, um, but uh, but it is. It is probably because uh, of proximity of, of, if you think of Port Everglades, for instance, and uh, the international airport that we have, uh, Fort Lauderdale International, there's, it's, the distance is 1.5 miles. So the proximity of moving your goods and moving your people is really uh, accommodating. Uh, think of, you know, you can, from this location, uh, you know, I think everybody likes to say that we're the, uh, the closest place to some other point, right? Uh, whether it's Europe, uh, the Caribbean basin, or but but truly, this, this is the same as as the West Coast, and and actually the whole Florida, right? We have twenty two international airports. We know how to move move people. That's for sure. And, and how many fourteen deep sea ports? We know how to move goods as well. But South Florida as well has three uh, deep sea ports. Uh, it's a very established. Uh, uh, community and 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 um and the workforce is also there uh, over 32 you know universities and, and tech colleges so uh, we can provide the workforce we need it's a turnkey operation if you uh, that i like to say uh, it's not a cheapest necessarily right if you compare it to other locations in the state but but the services are uh, right at your building and, and what you need to do is just start your business. We'll help you do that really, really quickly. Um, manufacturing for that reason, I think another piece that, that's important is that there's more than a hundred languages spoken here. Um, we had years ago, uh, a, a call center that wanted to establish itself in South Florida. I said, why would you come here? Why don't you go to Ohio or you know the Midwest? The, you know, real estate is clearly cheaper there. And they said, well, I would have to relocate everyone. But if I establish myself in South Florida, everybody's here already. Uh, so, so that piece of having more than 100 languages spoken here is very important. You have 104 municipalities, you know, back to each other. Um, so so it, it is a, a mega region. Uh, and, and because of that buzzling business, uh, if you come and manufacture here, it's easy to find the, the freight, uh, you know, uh, um, it's easy to connect to the port. It's, it's um, the system is in place. So it's just a matter of connecting to it. Excellent, Pierre. I, I wanna go back to the middle of everywhere. Uh, 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 Megan, uh, uh, cost uh, and incentives obviously are, are a driver for, you know, every company cares about cost. Um, what, what kinds of, of things, uh, Megan, do, do your region do to help mitigate uh, that major issue with cost. Absolutely. I, I, a lot of times, you know, 
one of the first major questions when looking for a location is what type of assistant and what, in what incentives are in the area. Um, if we also don't know that those are the end all be all in a project selection, but being in a rural region, we do have some tools that some of our surrounding areas don't have just because of our rural designation. So one of those that we have is a rural job tax credit. Um, it's a very easy program to use. There's no commitment of jobs up front. There's no commitment of wages. As long as you hit some of the parameters of how many jobs you create in the first 12 months of operations and you submit that paperwork, you can get a tax credit for those jobs that are created. And that program also allows businesses to apply year over year as long as they continue to grow. So that's a unique one that we have in our area. Um, most of our communities in our region also have local tax exemption programs. Those allow um, a company to defer those taxes for a period of up to 10 years, and that allows them to get their, you know, their feet wet, get grounded into the community, um, benefit their bottom line, and then create that success over the next 10 years um, after that exemption is, is over. Um, Another thing that we have that I prefer the most that involves no paperwork, which I think is the best type of incentive, is that our region has no impact fees. So that might not be something that is understood everywhere, but essentially impact fees are an additional cost to building or renovating um, a building or building a new site. Um, and so those are just extra fees that you can keep in your pocket, again, to put back into your business um, and, and make that development that much less expensive. We also have expedited permitting. Um, I spoke a lot about, about um, it in my overview earlier. Since we are a smaller region, there's a lot less bureaucracy. Um, if I need to call up a county commissioner or a city manager, I can get them on the phone in five minutes and we can hash something out and we can make sure that that process is as simple as possible. Another thing that you'll find too is that we have a lot of hands-on service. Most of us that work in this region are from this region. I was born and raised in Highlands County, um, the region that I, I represent within our six county region. Um, we're one of those places where you cannot go to the market or the grocery store without running into someone that you know. So that makes that connection super, super easy. Um, so that hands-on concierge service that we really push goes a long way as an incentive, again, without paperwork. And any sort of connection that can be done in a timely manner saves time, which we know adds to the less risk and the last cost of money that you're going to have if you're waiting longer for things. And then um, we do have some pro uh, communities that have stronger, different incentive programs. Our Hardy County um, within our region has their own discretionary cash program that they can utilize in their industrial park that's run by their industrial development authority. So every part of our region is unique, um, but overall it's as business friendly as possible, like some of my partners um, throughout the rest of the state um, have mentioned, and we're able to be that one-stop shop to make it as easy as possible. And we will also walk you through any potential incentive that may be on the table. The less paperwork for y'all, the better. Amen to that, uh, Megan, <laughs> absolutely. Um, all right, now we've come, I think now to the lightning round. Of our, uh, of our question time. So the first uh, lightning round question, and please keep your answers to one to two minutes, um, is going to be about tech. So tech is embedded in just about everything that any company does, whether it's internal to the company's operations or vital to, uh, to their product and how they, uh, how they develop it, how they deliver it. Uh, so the first one's, uh, um, well, I'm going to ask everyone, raise your hand if you're a good region for tech. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Glad, glad to have everyone with me. Uh, Warren, you go first. Okay. Um, two minutes. Okay. Uh, the, the areas tech is, is uh, once again, you know, we're, we're a community of small businesses. We, we, and, and the, the key thing to know about tech in Southwest Florida is, you know, we're not home to a bunch of pure tech companies. We don't, we don't have a Microsoft. We don't have an Apple. We don't have, you know, but we have, as we see these corporate headquarters grow, as we see these operations come into the community, tech is integral to every type of business now. It's no longer its own industry the same way that it used to be. And so the professional networking, we have a, a, a strong regional technology partnership, Southwest Florida Tech, that, that connects folks for both professional development, social interactions. They're, they're launching some programs to connect with remote workers that have located to Florida, both you know, from domestic as well as international. We see a strong influx of some technology professionals from the Caribbean and, and from Europe um, that, that are you know, appeal to the 
entrepreneurial uh, focus of the university. Um, they've also launched a, a robust technology leadership program, kind of modeled on what the Chambers of Commerce do. And um, so it, it's, I don't know if there's any one thing that I'd point out to say that, you know, we have this, you know, prestige company to say, oh, here's what we do for tech. But the focus is always there underlying whatever we're trying to do, because it is such a key component is now, you know, for success in a company, I can't think of any industry that can go back to, to just craftsmanship with no technology. Uh, but well, even that's technology when you stop and think about it, you know, it's, it, everything is tech. So, Absolutely. Uh, Warren, same question to you, Adam. Yeah, with tech, that's where we're seeing most of our activity right now, especially when you're talking about a lot of software engineering, product development type companies, even a lot of different software consulting, cloud services type of computing companies. We're just seeing so much tech growth and that acceleration of that industry sector across our entire community. Some of it is inbound. Some of it is coming from foreign markets. But also a lot of our region is focused on growing our own tech clusters too. So a lot of the regions and economic development agencies have their own accelerator incubator type programs where they're trying to start up and build their own tech ecosystem clusters. And all of those clusters throughout the region are working together to really advance things. So not only do we have clusters with incubators in Polk County, in Sarasota, in Hillsborough, Pinellas, Pasco, Hernando, really all of those places have those type of programs, but we're also fueled with a strong university talent partnership through the University of South Florida, which has, again, over 50,000 students, and one of their strongest programs is their software engineering and computer science programs. They also do research and development opportunities through what's called the Florida High Tech Corridor Council that is actually tying together a number of different regions throughout the entire Central Florida area through research and development programs through the University of South Florida, University of Florida, and University of Central Florida, where companies can partner with their R&D, with university faculty and staff, and there are grant programs out there to help offset some of those costs to develop new products and technology. So we're seeing a lot of that happening and it's really putting us on the map. Some of the key investment areas we're really seeing is cybersecurity, FinTech, healthcare technology, and supply chain management technology. For example, Penske put a new IT operations center here in Tampa Bay recently, and it was solely for their technology. That was a huge win for us. And even companies like ARK Invest from New York, which is a major investment firm that is investing in disruptive um, technologies and does a lot of that, they are putting their new headquarters in St. Pete. So those are all things that are fueling our tech growth. Very impressive, Adam. And, and Pierre, you, you mentioned a, a, a litany of, of tech activities in, uh, in Southeast Florida. Uh, anyone that uh, jumps out at you? Sure, you know, you, uh, it makes me think, I was listening to Adam and also the 3D manufacturing, which is really big here. And uh, to, to Warren's point, you know, every company is a technology company nowadays, but, but here we like to say, work in the cloud, live in the sun. And uh, for those listeners who have access, I'm sure everyone has access to a computer today. If you, uh, you may want to visit a, a tech gateway site so it's techgateway.org and uh, you'll see an asset map that we created because there's a lot of history uh, in the region when it comes to technology i know that some some of you out there do have a cell phone right mm -hmm. well a smartphone actually but the, the the cell phone and many people do not know this the technology for the cell phone was invented by motorola right here so uh, everyone around the world enjoys having one today, but it came from here. And the same for the personal computer. You know, the technology came from IBM and Boca Raton. So there's a lot of strong history. Some of you might, like me, remember the beeper. <laughs> also from here. So, so there's a, a strong relationship to technology. If you look at that map, uh, you know, think of Citrix, which uh, is known around the world, UKG, um, uh, uh, Kemet, which produces capacitors, which you cannot operate a, a phone or a computer without a capacitor, is at core here magically. Um, so virtual reality and, and, and everything, everything beyond that, um, you know, do business here and a strong workforce. So there's about 100 and 
50,000 technology jobs in South Florida alone. Um, so that gives you an idea of, of how large this industry is. Wow, it is so, very, very impressive. Um, work in the cloud, it, live in the sun. I, I, I really like that one, uh, Pierre. I might, I might use that one too. Um, uh, Megan, uh, uh, again, uh, more tech in, uh, in South Central Florida. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll probably bounce off some things that Warren and Adam both said. You know, healthcare is actually quite strong in our region, much more strong than you may think um, in a rural area, but it's quite concentrated. So we are seeing a lot more interest in regards to health tech, which makes sense building on our strengths of industry. Um, like Warren said too, pretty much everything is tech. It doesn't just have to be a FinTech building sitting there with all the people calculating. You have it in advanced manufacturing. Um, so our college does have an advanced manufacturing program with hands-on components with the 3D printing. Um, they work with people on building prototypes. Um, and then through that program that they've built, as everyone was speaking of, there are regional partnerships outside of our Southern regions that we're talking to today. Probably many of them that you spoke to earlier in a panel that represent the Northern part um, have those interconnections too. So our state college that has that advanced manufacturing program, if you go through a certain cert level of certification, there's a direct transfer to Florida Polytechnic just to North and, and Polk County. Um, so there's all of that interconnectedness we're also seeing too, and probably everyone else has, we know that the state is constantly growing with an influx of people that want to move here for various reasons. We're seeing them come from New York. We're definitely seeing them come in from California. It's very expensive over there. They're realizing through the pandemic that you can do a lot of things more remotely. And so we have been getting interest in that. People can come in and work here. If they want the lifestyle that's not as expensive, they can get lakefront property um, for a fraction of the cost as beachfront property. If they wanna have both, that's doable too. We have people that like to have a house here for the weekdays and then spend their weekend house on, on the coast. Um, so we have those opportunities as well. We're strongly based in agriculture here, but that doesn't mean that's just, you know, picking fruit and throw it in the bed of a truck. Any sort of agriculture now is, is handled with drones. I mean, there's technology everywhere in our community. Um, and we're working on building that pipeline uh, with our students um, that are just interested in getting more into technology because we know that the jobs of today are not gonna be the same jobs in 10, 15 years from now. Um, so we see, it, we see it all the time with the technology. And one thing that you'll see too, and probably many of my other colleagues do the same, when we see that there are infrastructure types of um, portions that really need to be improved upon to continue to build opportunities in our communities, um, right now we're making a very strong effort on bolstering the broadband component across the entire region, which will create an even higher backbone for when trying to bring more technology type of companies into the area, whether it be a data center or whatnot. So, you know, we might not be the first one that pops into mind, but I can assure all of you that um, if you want a first entry to a market uh, where things are still low cost, but over time, it's going to have to build inwards. There's only so much space in the state of Florida. It's not a great, it's a great place to come and get your start before it gets completely built up and is expensive like all of our neighbors. So roundabout way to answer that question, but tech is everywhere and it's very exciting. Megan, appreciate that and, and completely agree with the perspective. We are growing very, very fast and um, absolutely looking to help companies. One, one question that did come in through uh, the chat feature uh, talks about manufacturing in Florida and, and exporting that product. We realize the vast majority of the global market is outside of the United States. And yes, there are resources to help uh, Florida-based uh, companies looking to export. That includes exhibiting together at foreign shows. Uh, and it also includes identifying potential buyers for those uh, for those products. We um, I worked with a company years and years ago, a European-based company who wanted to uh, to export to Latin America. They didn't do that from Europe. They opened up a Florida operation, which has the better connections to uh, to uh, to Latin America. That was uh, that was their uh, that was their solution uh, to that issue. And absolutely, uh, and again, we're, we're a little pressed uh, for time. Another. Um, I Another think comment about one thing that we left out today is the, the use of foreign trade zones for yes. that particular question, you know, and, and the benefit of being able to move your goods, let's say from Europe, have them in a foreign trade zone where you do not pay duty until you resell 
And that is if you sell, resell within the United States. But if you resell to Latin America, you never paid a duty because it never entered the USA. So that's a tremendous, tremendous service. Agreed, uh, Peter, a great call uh, there. Another uh, comment came in through the chat about cyber uh, security. I think just about every region in Florida uh, has companies engaged in cybersecurity. Uh, obviously it's a big issue for uh, planet Earth, <laughs> not just, uh, not just uh, uh, the US. So um, our, uh, our, our focus on that is very strong. And the good news is our university system in our entire state is geared toward the needs of industry. If industry says they need, uh, they need uh, candidates and students who can do X, Y, and Z, the university system and the college system and the school districts listen. And they I want think to that's an excellent yeah. point. Uh, yeah, because I know that our university system and our school districts between the state colleges that offer that quick, rapid uh, certifications and credentialing to the full-on degree programs in the universities, but everything done in our school districts, Collier, Lee, Charlotte County, is focused on career academies and, and things like that that can get the students earlier and earlier in that talent pipeline, getting them prepared for the jobs of the future. And, and they, they're, they're doing a, a, a world-class job on that. So. And I'll just add specifically for cybersecurity, because Florida has a very unique asset when it comes to cybersecurity that I've had companies tell me does not exist across the entire United States. And that's an entity called Cyber Florida. They partner with all the state university systems and education partners to help develop and really put out cybersecurity programs, whether it's bachelor's degrees, certificate programs, to really build up that talent pipeline. And they're doing a lot of work throughout the entire state to really make sure that we're one of the top destinations, if not the top destination, for cybersecurity companies. Yeah, and, and one thing that uh, uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, companies need more than anything is, is talent. Obviously, cybersecurity uh, can be done from anywhere on planet Earth. Uh, cyber attacks can happen anywhere on planet Earth, too. Um, but one of the best places on planet Earth to recruit and retain and attract that talent is Florida. So if that talent can work anywhere, and they do, uh, why not choose Florida uh, for, uh, for that operation? That same argument goes for any industry that you can think of. If talent is the A number one issue companies are facing and the data shows that it is, why not locate your company in a, in a community in an area that can attract and retain and grow that talent? Uh, very key. I, I also heard uh, another, uh, another one in the chat. Florida uh, is the new Silicon Valley. Any comments on that? Who wants to jump on that one? You know, we're getting a lot of that comparison in Tampa Bay that we're the next big up and coming Silicon Valley tech area. Forbes just ranked us number one in that area. Um, but also we're just we're seeing it with the type of companies that are coming here again, those real innovative software companies, whether they're doing AI chat bots for marketing purposes to cybersecurity. But we haven't quite gotten the big tech, you know, your big Amazon, Facebook. And while there's still an attractive appeal to have that, what we've really seen in the Tampa Bay region is that companies are coming here because we haven't had that real hyper competitiveness that they've seen in Silicon Valley. And companies really do a good job here, working together here, collaborating together here. And we've always heard that Tampa Bay is just such a welcoming community and that you can really get a chance to do something special. And I'm sure that's the same way across a lot of our regions. Florida is, a, is truly a special place, and in the 90 or so seconds that we have remaining, I wanted to thank all of the panelists. You guys did a fantastic job. Um, South and uh, Central Florida is very well served uh, by, your, by your leadership, and also, please, 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 uh, as you are watching in cyberspace, visit our virtual booths. Uh, they're staffed by our, uh, our teammates and our friends and our professionals. We want to be able to help you, and please do uh, to uh, visit those booths. So uh, thank you so much uh, to all the panelists, uh, Megan and Adam, uh, Warren and Pierre. Fantastic job. Um, and looking forward to uh, working on more companies with you to bring them to Florida. Thank you. Thank